On October 4th, 2005, the Tazar Fight Caves was released, and with that came the ability to unlock a new best-in-slot cape, the Fire Cape. The best cape before this time was considered to be either the Legends Cape or the Obsidian Cape. And while well, the Fire Cape was unlike any other PVM challenge before, as it included 63 different waves of monsters, all leading up to one final fight, Jad. On its release, both Jad level 702, as well as Ketzek, commonly referred to as the 360s, would both surpass the Calify Queen level 333 as the highest level monster in game at that time. Jad would also surpass the Calfi Queen and now be considered the strongest monster in the game. With Jad's release also came a different type of boss fight, a monster that had the ability to use all three styles of the combat triangle. On top of that, its ranged and magic attacks had the ability to hit up to 97, which allowed players much more room for error. Jad's mechanics, as well as a player's ability to keep their rapid heartbeat and shaking hands in check, served to be no easy task and the Fire Cape was looked upon as a high-tier accomplishment for the next several years after its release. Today, I want to look back at the evolution of the Fight Caves, specifically the low-level Fire Cape. I hope you guys enjoy. You can argue that the first year of the Fight Cave's release was centered around the community learning about the different monsters and their mechanics, the monsters evolved in each of the 63 waves, as well as the best gear and methods for defeating these waves. Just like when new bosses are released into the game today, theory crafting or the analysis of game mechanics to discover optimal strategies and tactics to win is used. What was eventually agreed upon by the community back then on a normal attempt was using the ranged combat style with at least 43 prayer for protection prayers and an inventory of Ceridome and Brews and Super Restores topped off with a couple of ranging potions. And this setup and inventory was exactly what the earliest recorded low level firekeep attempt looked like. It happened on November 21st, 2006, nearly one year after the release of the Fight Caves by a player named UAEX Biaser. UAEX, whose gear included a magic shortbow, rune arrows, red dehyde champs and bambruses, Robin Hood hat, ranger boots, fury, archer's ring, and an obsidian cape, completed the Fight Caves at 47 combat, which included 37 attack, 33 strength, 1 defense, 63 ranged, 43 prayer, 61 magic, and 44 hit points. UAEX's strategy involved trapping Jad and the four healers behind the Italy rock and using his rune arrows and the protection prayers to defeat the four-legged behemoth. For just over one year after the release of the Fight Caves, to have a completion already at level 47 combat was monumental, seeing how there were accounts who were level 100 or higher that still couldn't successfully defeat Jad, both back then as well as in today's game. One month later, a player by the name Majex Range was able to beat UAEX's Fire Cape by 4 levels, achieving it at just 43 combat. Although this player unfortunately didn't release a video of his completion, I was able to find a video showcasing a high level player following this guy around asking him how he completed Jad. Majex Range said that he completed it using ranged, and the video mentions that he had only 55 ranged, which is significantly lower than UAEX's 63 range completion when he was 47 combat. Also, it's worth noting that if you look closely enough, there are a lot of high level players around, many of which weren't even good enough to get a fire cape, and were wearing god capes, legend capes, or skill capes. And then you have a level 43 flexing on them with this fire cape. Within two months after Majex Range's completion at 43 combat, UAEX joined the party again with a completion at 42 combat on February 25th, 2007, beating the record by one level. 
Under the name UAEX vs Jad, he completed the run with 56 range, 40 hit points, and 43 prayer. UAX used the exact same strategy as his level 47 cape, trapping Jad and the four healers behind the Italy rock. His setup was a bit different, downgrading to the blue dehyde chaps and famersons since that's what his range level allowed. He also did upgrade from an obsidian cape in his previous run to a Zamorak cloak in this run as it increased his prayer bonus. At the end of the video, he also shows a picture of his level 42 combat fire cape next to Mage X Range's 43 combat fire cape. You can see in this picture that Mage X Range typed a message in Dutch. When you translate this message to the English language, it translates to, I'll grab you again. I'm guessing this means, I'll beat you again, showing that the low level fire cape competition was fierce, even 12 years ago. Just three months later, on May 13th, 2007, UAEX was able to beat his record by two more combat levels, coming in with the level 40 combat fire cape on his account, UAEX on fire. In this completion, he had the same exact setup of his 42 combat fire cape, the Archer's Ring, Fury, Magic Shortbow, Robin Hood Hat, Ranger's Boots, Monk Robe, Zamorak Cloak, and the Blue Dehyde Vambruses and Chaps. His inventory also remained the same as his level 42 combat fire cape, with purple sweets in one inventory slot, and super restores in the remaining 27 slots. However, there was one major difference between his 42 combat cape and his 40 combat cape. In his 42 combat cape, he started the run at 39 hit points and ended at 40 hit points, gaining just one level. However, in his 40 combat cape, he started the run at 10 hit points and ended up at 33 hit points, which means he was a full 7 HP levels lower, which is how he saved 2 combat levels. His final stats for the 40 combat fire cape included 54 ranged, 43 prayer, and 33 hit points. If you can believe it, after UAX's 40 combat completion, there were no additional fire capes that matched this record for a very long time. It wasn't until August 9th, 2014, over 7 years since the level 40 fire cape completion by UAX, when someone had finally beat it. That completion on August 9th, 2014 belonged to Rendy. On Rendy's account named Caping, he completed the run with 46 range, 43 prayer, 40 magic, and 37 hit points. His combat level was 37, beating the old record by 3 levels. One thing you can notice is his ranged level was significantly lower than UAX's 46 ranged at the end of the run versus UAX's 54 ranged. The gear was also much different as UAX was playing RuneScape 2 and Rendy was playing old school RuneScape. Rendy's setup included using a Mist Sebo, Holy Sandal, Zamrak Miter, Zamrak Top, Zamrak Cloak, Emerald Bolts E, Undamaged Book, Green Dehyde Chaps, Regen Bracelet, Fury, and an Archer's Ring. In fact, he ended with the Green Dehyde Chaps, but he actually started at just 39 ranged and entered the caves using Studded Chaps, as shown by his inventory. Just like UAX, Rendy also had used Purple Sweets in his inventory, something that will be consistent with the low level fire capes as we see from here on out. If you aren't aware, Purple Sweets are the only stackable food item in game, restoring between 1-3 to three hit points per eat, as well as 10% run energy per sweet. Then, on August 14th, 2014, Rendy was able to lower the completion down to 3 more combat levels to 34 combat, on his account, Cape Fire. Nothing really changed between his 37 combat cape and 34 combat cape in terms of gear, as it was just 5 days apart, but for the fire cape attempt, he started the run with much lower stats, just 26 range, 26 HP, and 43 prayer. Rendy chose 26 range because it allowed him to start the run using an Iron Sea Bow. When he hit 36 ranged inside the caves, he would be able to switch to a Myth Sea Bow, what he thought was needed at the time to defeat Jad. After the cave completion, he was 42 ranged, 35 HP, and of course, still 43 prayer.
Four months later, on December 14th, 2014, Rendy again would beat his record by just one level. This attempt and completion was done by his account, Rending Jad, at 41 ranged, 43 prayer, and just 31 hit points. The completion was one ranged level lower and four HP levels lower than his previous attempt. What may be tough to realize or understand is 4 HP levels lower is a lot, and when you get to wave 60 for example, with a 360 major, 180 melee, and 290 rangers, that is a lot of damage to tank for such low HP. And yes, tanking was still the method in 2014 for complicated waves like this. But as you can see in his inventory, Rendy swiftly accounted for that tanking, bringing more summer pies than in previous attempts so he could combo eat with the Ceridoman Brew. And it's important to note that the reason for summer pies is that they heal 11 HP per half and you get two halves per inventory slot. It was a nice record, but it would only hold up for two weeks. Just two weeks later, on December 28th, 2014, Randy successfully completed the fight caves with another record, at just 31 combat. This was another two levels lower than his previous completion. For the first time, he started a run at 10 hit points, which was monumental and foreshadowed the future of the low-level fire cape progression. So his starting stats included 20 ranged, 10 hit points, and 43 prayer, which means he was only 17 combat when he entered the fight caves. By the end of the completion, he was 39 ranged and 29 hit points, again at 31 combat. In this particular run, Rendy also tried bringing Mithril knives for the level 22 bats. For all previous runs leading up to this point, he actually used magic on the bats to quickly kill them to avoid losing prayer points. If you didn't know, the bats drain your prayer with each successful hit on you. Although the myth knives proved to be much worse, it was still an understandment that Rendy continuously tried to innovate his strategies for better success. And again, he also had to tank some near impossible lures, such as on wave 60 with the double 90 rangers, 180 melee, and 360 major. I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but this is where his iron plate body you may have seen on some previous records came in. He would wear the iron plate body to give himself an increase in defense bonuses which helped him tank the 90 rangers. Also, as mentioned before, wave 60 was one of several ways where he utilized combo eating. Summer pies followed by a brew. Due to having more food in his inventory, his number of super restores was hindered which also meant that he had to begin saving prayer when he could. On this particular run, he prayer flicked perfectly for 10 hours on the 360 majors to save those prayer points. Also, due to being low on super restores and prayer in general, Rendy also maximized the poison mechanism of his enchanted emerald bolts, allowing the poison to kill the majority of Jad. Of course, this is the strategy we see later on with the progression of the low level fire cape, but it indeed started here. And of course, the record was again beat, but it took just about 5 months on May 2nd, 2015 at just 30 combat. Under the account name Rendy Tears, Rendy's starting stats included just 5 ranged, 17 magic, 1 defense, 43 prayer, and 11 hit points. On this run, he completely ditched the Mithril Seabow and Emerald Bolts Enchanted, and instead used a Maple Short and Adieros Plus Plus for the later waves. However, since he started at 5 ranged and couldn't use the Maple Short Bow until 30 ranged, it appears that a lot of his earlier waves were completed with the Steel Knives Plus Plus shown in his inventory, as well as Magic, as he went from 17 Magic to 35 Magic during this run. And just like all previous completions, he used the Italy Rock to trap Jad and the Healers. His ending stats here were 37 ranged, 43 prayer, 35 magic, and 30 hit points. Although he was 1 HP level more than his last run at 31 combat, he was able to use enough poison damage to save 2 ranged levels, ultimately beating the record by 1 level. Then, in August of 2015, the fight caves would be forever changed. An update to the game, which was not pulled, changed the fight cave rotations. Before, the fight caves had one static rotation, meaning that there would be the same predictable 63 waves every single time a fight cave run was attempted. However, with the new update brought completely randomized rotations, with the monsters arranged in different spots of each wave. 
This made it really challenging for low levels to predict waves and complete fight caves. However, after months of trial and error, a breakthrough was discovered by Rendy and Stereoperm, and that was that there was in fact 15 different wave patterns or wave rotations which could be predicted based upon what time you entered the caves. So if you wanted rotation 2, which was later learned to be optimal for one prayer counts, you would have to enter the fight caves at a particular time. Rotation 2 would be used during Rendy's next completion, a 25 combat fire cape which beat his current record by 5 levels on January 18th, 2016. Under the account name Rending, he was able to use a completely different strategy that involved having 1 attack, 1 strength, 75 defense with 1 prayer, 1 magic, 1 ranged, and 26 hit points. The foundation of this account was to use the Serpentine Helm's poisoning mechanism within the fight caves to make his way through each wave, which had a 75 defense requirement to wield. He trained a 75 defense through Tackled Organized Crime during the first week of the minigame's release. He used alts to get all of the gangsters down to low HP, and then hopped world by world on this account, rending to finish the gangsters off and get the intelligence drop. Doing this, rending actually got all the way to 14 hit points and was 22 combat. Rending's first attempts of the caves were at these stats, 75 defense, 14 HP, and 22 combat. However, at the time, he deemed it impossible to complete the caves because he couldn't take eat the 180 melees. Furthermore, the 180 melees could max 25s, and even with Guthix restores, he would only be boosted to 19 hit points. Therefore, he decided to go to Witch's house to get 26 hit points. That put him at 25 combat, and he was once again ready to return to the caves, only this time with the ability to survive the 180s. This would be the build that Rending would ultimately achieve the fire cape on. After nearly 10 hours of the caves and multiple attempts, Rending had finally done it. He had achieved the lowest level fire cape in game at just 25 combat. For the 90 rangers and 360 majors, he again used the same strategy as he used on his level 30 cape, tick eating their attacks with purple sweets. For over the next year and a half, the low level fire cape attempts became stale. The Serp Helm, which was used to beat the old record by 5 combat levels, had been patched within the fight cave so its poisoning mechanism wasn't allowed. It even seemed that Rendy had given up, going almost completely inactive on his YouTube channel. But then came an up-and-coming YouTuber in 2017 by the name of KempQ. And on September 22nd, 2017, KempQ came up with an idea of how to potentially beat Randy's 25 combat fire cape. The method involves staying at all 1 combat stats, but getting 75 hit points to wield a ring of suffering, which would put him at just 19 combat, hypothetically beating Rendy's record by 6 levels. The ring of suffering could store up to 2500 ring of recoils within it, meaning that using ring of recoils and tick eating each NPC, he could successfully make it through the caves and claim the lowest level fire cape. Or could he? The level 75 hit points account was locked behind hundreds of hours of fossil cleaning at Varak Museum just to get the stats required to wear the Ring of Suffering. And on top of that, the biggest flaw within Kemp's idea still remained. How could he defeat the level 180 melees as they healed faster than a Ring of Recoil could damage them? Still, Kempq's theory crafting with the Ring of Suffering would foreshadow the future of the low level Fire Cape account. Over the next year and a half, while KempQ kept hypothesizing new ways to defeat the level 180 meleers, on May 5th, 2019, Rendy put out a video titled The 18 Combat Fire Cape. In this video, Rendy successfully beat his old fire cape record by 7 combat levels to capture yet another world record fire cape in old school runescape. The entire accolade, including the strategy, its execution, and then the video editing was absolutely superb, and although it unfortunately didn't, many players and creators thought that it would win Jagex's 2019 Golden Gnome Award as Video of the Year. The video was completed at 26 attack, 14 ranged, 14 magic, 43 prayer, and just 17 hit points. 
The primary method involved flinching each NPC with a Mithril Dagger P++ and letting the poison kill it, including the level 180 Maleers. He had to repoison all of the 360s twice due to them having higher hit points than any other NPCs in the caves. Sometimes he had to repoison them a third time as they would regenerate their hit points before he could land another hit on them. He also used ranged and bronze bolts P++ to hit NPCs that were too far away and used Earth Strike to quickly kill bats to avoid losing prayer points. Then, nearly six months later on November 4th, 2019, Rendy again beat his own record by one level, with a 17 combat cape on his account, Sulfur Dark. While there were mostly similarities between the 18 and 17 combat fire capes, there were also two major differences. The first major difference was that Rendy used a Ring of the Gods for the 18 combat cape, which gives plus four prayer bonus. However, he ended the 18 combat cape with 7 extra super restores, so he didn't deem the extra prayer bonus as necessary. Instead, he decided to switch to the Ring of Brimstone, which gives plus 4 attack, plus 4 range, and plus 4 magic bonuses. The second major difference was that Rendy used a Black Dagger, 10 attack wielding requirement versus the Mithril Dagger, 20 attack wielding requirement. The Black Dagger was a major drawback as on average it would take 1 hour to get a singular poison to hit each of the 360s. Most of the 360s would require 2, sometimes 3 poisons per kill, so Rendy was looking at over another 100 hour cape. The primary strategy of the cape remained the same, he used melee to flinch the majority of the monsters and let the daggers poison hit until each monster's death. For the level 22 bats, Rendy would again use magic in hopes of killing him quick enough to avoid prayer drain. He would also bring a bronze crossbow and use range in rare instances when NPCs were too far away. Overall, it was another successful run for Rendy, who started this attempt at 10 attack, 9 mage, 10 ranged, and 10 hit points, as well as 43 prayer. The run was completed at 22 attack, 13 mage, 13 ranged, 17 hit points, and 43 prayer. On November 20th, 2019, after years of Randy dominating the low-level fire cape scene, we finally witnessed a low-level record by another player. That player went by the name of Exact. Exact, who became popular on Twitch for his low-level infernal cape completions, decided to test his luck with the low-level fire cape record as well. And he succeeded, of course. With this 16 combat completion, Exact laid the foundation for what would eventually end as the no overhead fire cape. For now, however, this attempt and success was a 40 prayer cape, which meant he couldn't protect from melee. To get away without protecting from melee, a lot of his planning within the waves involved trapping the 45s and 180s around the Italy Rock, or on the more complex waves, trapping them behind the level 360s. Similar to Randy's 17 combat cape, the primary method again involved flinching monsters with a poison dagger. However, it is worth noting that Exact also started the caves with 5 attack versus Randy's 10 attack, meaning he only had a poison steel dagger at the start of his run. Similar to Randy to strategically make his way through the waves, Exact also used the purple sweets for tick eating and healing purposes. His stats with the 16 combat cape ended at 21 attack, 1 strength, 1 defense, 13 ranged, 40 prayer, and 16 hit points. This completion was huge as it showed that maybe protection prayers weren't necessary after all to complete the low level fire cape. Nearly three weeks later, on December 13th, 2019, Exact topped his 16 combat fire cape by two levels, getting a 14 combat cape. His starting stats were as low as anyone has ever started the fire cape to this date, with only 6 ranged and 40 prayer. He remained at 1 attack, 1 strength, 1 defense, 1 magic, and just 10 hit points. With these stats, his gear setup was a little bit different, going into the caves with just the Bronze Dagger++. Plus Plus. He also wielded a Fury, Region Bracelet, and Brimstone Ring. His inventory was incredibly different from a 16 combat completion, with 22 of the 28 spaces being Rings of Recoils. This gave Exact 880 Rings of Recoil charges, which would significantly help him avoid dealing damage and thus getting a lower combat level completion. 
However, with only 6 inventory spaces available, which included Purple Sweets, a Black Dagger, an Oak Shortbow, 2 Super Restores, and 1 Ceridome and Brew, how in the world was he going to defeat the Fight Caves with this inventory? Same as before, nearly everything revolved around flinching the NPCs and letting the poison kill them passively. However, with only 2 Super Restores, the amount of perfect flicking that went into this cape was absolutely incredible, my friends. During the later waves, the Oak Shortbow was used to kill the level 22s from a distance while they were trapped behind the other NPCs. When Exact got to Jad, he had used 21 of his 22 recoils, 3 of his 4 sips of the Ceridome and Brew, and only 1 of 2 Super Restores. After defeating Jad, Exact's ending stats included 17 attack, 11 ranged, 15 hit points, 40 prayer, and 1 strength and defense. With these stats, the record was believed to be sealed at 14 combat, which was even above perfect RNG. With a 1 in 4 chance of poisoning each NPC, all while starting at the lowest combat possible stats at wave 1. Therefore, technically at the brief time this record was set, he had in fact sealed the deal with the lowest combat fire cape, meaning it was physically impossible to beat this record with any conventional means. Or was it? Just as Randy has preached several times in his videos, his gameplay always involves thinking outside the box. And that is exactly what happened on December 16th, 2019 when he accomplished the 9 combat fire cape. Randy was able to figure out that if you had a ring of suffering and noted ring of recoils in your inventory, and then an unnoted ring of recoil in your inventory as well, you could use the noted ring of recoils on the ring of suffering to manually recharge the unnoted recoil ring. Ironically, the Ring of Suffering idea that was spearheaded by Kemp Q over two years ago, combined with flinching the 180s until they were poisoned, would be the recipe for success. Unfortunately, just as Kemp Q had found out, recoiling the 180s couldn't work as they outhealed the recoil damage. So on the 180s, melee XP had to be gained. But Rendy cleverly put the melee XP in defense, as it takes 4 defense levels to gain a combat level, versus only 3 attack levels or strength levels. This would be the difference between the 9 combat and 10 combat fire cape. Rendy's ending stats here included 1 attack, 1 strength, 5 defense, 43 prayer, and 10 hit points. The Ring of Suffering would be the biggest discovery on our journey to the level 3 fire cape. Without the Ring of Suffering discovery by Rendy, as I mentioned before, Exact truly would have sealed the deal with his 14 combat fire cape completion. Nearly one week later, on December 23rd, 2019, the record swapped hands again, going back to Exact. In this video, Exact acknowledged that Rendy had achieved the cape at the lowest defense level possible of 5. Therefore, in order to beat the record, he would have to sacrifice the only other stat that was getting him combat levels, and that stat was Prayer. Rendy's 9 combat cape used 43 prayer. Exact, who received an idea from a very good PVMer named Cloud Badass, recommended that he only use 37. He would pray against the majors, tick eat against the rangers, and safe spot the meleers. However, there was only one problem with that idea, and that was that the level 90 rangers had unpredictable attacks, sometimes throwing two projectiles at a player even before the first one hit, making tick eating impossible. But the good news for the viewers is that innovations have occurred many times in these low level fire capes before, and Exact figured out another one to solve this issue. Exact determined that the sweet spot for the level 90 rangers to have predictable, tick eatable attacks is within 9 tiles. Anything outside of 9 tiles, there would be the possibility of getting fired with 2 rapid attacks in succession and getting stacked out. So the goal for Exact was to combo eat Guthic's T's and Ceridome and Brews in an attempt to survive the ranger attacks just long enough to get within the 9 tile tick eating zone. For the 180's, the method didn't change, Exact just flinched and let the poison passively kill each NPC. For the flinching, Exact did switch weapons to a poisoned iron spear this run. And of course, for the 360s, he would use the unlimited Ring of Recoil effect to kill them without wasting any combat experience. Exact's ending stats on his 8 combat fire cape included 5 defense, 37 prayer, and 10 hit points.
One week later, on December 31st, 2019, Rennie successfully cut Exact's 8 combat cape in half with a 4 combat cape of his own. The biggest difference in this cape versus Exact's 8 combat cape was the complete elimination of prayer. With no overhead prayers, Rendy had to map out exact locations on where to be for each wave to avoid dying. Rendy's starting stats were of course all level 1 with 10 hit points. With 10 hit points and no overhead prayers, one wrong movement on any wave would result in tens of hours of time lost and the frustration of having to restart again. Just as Rendy's 9 combat cape and exact's 8 combat cape, the primary method involved using the function of the Ring of Suffering and noted recoils on each other to get the unlimited recoil ring effect. This strategy was used on the 45s, 90s, 360s, and JAD. On the 180s, since tick-eating melee is nearly impossible, the method again involved using poison which comes at a one-fourth chance of success every time a one is hit. Just like exact, Rendy would switch to the Iron Spear KP. Similar to exact, one of the biggest challenges would be the 90 Rangers. For the 90 Rangers, Randy took Exact's method and made it more foolproof. Since you can't tick eat on 10 HP, Randy realized that once he was 9 HP, his next heal would take him to 10 HP, making him unable to tick eat and giving the Ranger roughly a 4 in 14 chance of one hitting him. What he cleverly did to combat this was to complete the quest one small favor and unlock the Guthix Rests, which increases a player's HP by 5 levels. So if he tick 8 to 10 HP, his next drink would be the Guthix Rest to take him to 15 HP, and since Rangers can only max up to 13, he could never die and would just resume tick eating. Rendy also used combo tick eating throughout this 4 combat completion, a strategy in which he said he hypothesized during his 18 combat fire cape. This is where the sacks of onions came in, a new food for this run that Rendy would bring into the caves. The sacks of onions had multiple uses and multiple combo tick eats within each one as he could pull out a raw onion, use a knife and bowl on it, and therefore cook it inside the vents inside the fight caves with a 0% burn rate at 76 cooking. The combo tick eating was used for both the 90 rangers and 360 majors. For the 90 rangers, it was especially useful from a far distance, greater than 9 tiles. When a ranger is greater than 9 tiles, it will actually get off 2 attacks before the first one hits. So the combo tick eating essentially made it so Randy was tick eating the first hit and the second hit in rapid succession. The combo tick eating would save him from getting stacked out with 2 quick attacks and give him enough time to get inside the 9 square zone for the ranger to have more normal, predictable attacks. When this cape was completed, the only levels Randy got were 4 defense levels, putting him at 4 combat. With the current strategies, there was a 1 in 13 chance of successfully getting a 3 combat fire cape if you got lucky RNG on the 180s. But both Rendy and Exact had another trick up their sleeve to each get the 3 combat fire cape. The 3 combat cape was a team effort between Exact and Rendy, commonly achieved right around January 14th, 2020. Throughout the journey, they fought against each other in hopes of one-upping each other for fame and notoriety. But now they both realized that a 3 combat cape was possible, and decided to work together to each accomplish one. Still, the biggest flaw in their strategy was that they got defense experience on the 180 Maleers, which resulted in them having to rely on luck to avoid getting 4 combat. But what if there was a strategy to avoid killing some of the 180s, just enough to stay at 3 combat? One of the things discovered amongst them was that the elemental shield, when used with a prayer interface, could stall damage long enough where you could actually tick eat melee attacks. Well, that was a start, but the problem remained that you couldn't possibly tick eat the 180s faster than they could heal themselves. This is where Kemp Q's theory crafting idea came back in. KempQ found out a strategy that when a second NPC is close enough to the 180s, the 180 will actually heal the monster closest to them versus itself. So during the tick eating of the 180s, they also had to position a monster close enough so that when the 180s were low enough HP, instead of healing itself, it would heal the other monster. Randy and Exact calculated that with average RNG, they would have to use this tick eating melee strategy for 8 waves. For each 180, it took around 1000 purple sweets on top of 1 to 1.5 one hours to kill it. That means to kill 12 180s using this method, it was 12,000 purple sweets in 12 to 18 hours of additional time. 
And at the current time of this recording, purple sweets are 4,000 GP each, meaning that it cost them 48 mil for the sweets required to do the strategy, and that if one mistake was made, a heavy, heavy GP investment was lost, on top of tens of hours of time. With this strategy, you also had to have one prayer point, and Rendy unfortunately learned the hard way when a bat took his prayer to zero during earlier waves, and he went and tried this method. During that run, he didn't have super restores in his inventory as he was one prayer and thought he didn't need them, and well, he was wrong, and he died as the melee stalling didn't work properly. For both of their three combat fire capes, their completions ended at one attack, one strength, three defense, one prayer, one ranged, one magic, and ten hit points. Guys, that's gonna do it here. Congrats to both Rendy and Exact on incredible accomplishments. The level three fire cape. I can't wait to see if anyone else will be able to accomplish this other than these two guys. If you guys did enjoy this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for 33,000 subscribers. And also, if you do want to see a speedrunning video of the lowest level speedruns in the fight caves, please let me know down below in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. Peace.